The Fukushima nuclear crisis says it was down to the plant's operators being ill-prepared and not responding properly to the quake and tsunami disaster. A major government inquiry said some engineers abandoned the plant as the trouble started and other staff delayed reporting significant radiation leaks. To discuss more on this, I'm joined by Professor Christopher Busby, Scientific Secretary at the European Committee on Radiation Risks. Thanks for joining us. So the report claims operators failed to respond properly, and you said before that the authorities had been lax and slow in handling the situation. To what extent do you feel the assessment's been confirmed by these findings? Well, I think my assessment has been con confirmed 100%, but, but I, I do have to say that I don't think that, uh, that this inquiry has gone far enough because there are lots of questions that they haven't asked and there are lots of questions that still haven't been answered. What are some of those? Well, the main, the most important one uh, is has to do with the um, the health effects of the contamination. Now, that it, it, it's kind of assumed that everybody knows that these health effects are are not going to be serious. But like, just like I said before, that this was a much more serious incident than anyone had, uh, had, had was suggesting at the time. I'm now saying, or have been saying all along, that the health effects will be very much more serious than anyone is saying now. And I can tell you that there will probably be in some years' time another inquiry which will show also that I'm right there. And this is really sad because actually if they did concede that there was a big problem, then people could be could be moved out and, and other, uh, other activities could take place which would ensure that fewer people got sick than are going to. Why do you think it's taken Japan so long to admit that its response was inadequate? I think that there's an enormous pressure from the nuclear industry and from the people who, who stand to, to lose a lot of money with regard to the, the general uh, nuclear expansion scenario that we've been seeing in the last year or two. I mean, for the, for the nuclear industry, this was an absolute disaster. And it does seem to me from not only the way in which the Japanese have been constrained to handle this uh, this, this event, but also the way in which people all over the world are handling this event through the media. I have to say, not Russia today, and I'm very pleased about that. Um, that there does seem to be an enormous uh, uh, iron grip on the media with regard to the effects of this, of this terrifying accident, this, this catastrophe. The report also said the government published understated figures on the spread of the radiation. Can that be justified when millions of lives are at risk? Well, of course, that uh, uh, really is a, is a criminal event, as I said before, you know, that, that, that this is criminal irresponsibility because if people had known the extent of the radioactivity, had, uh, had, had the government uh, and, and also, I have to say, the International Atomic Energy Agency come clean with the extent of the contamination, people would have left, people would have got out, and these people who didn't get out will have been seriously contaminated, and this will affect their health. So, so really, this is quite a criminal affair, and I, I would hope that eventually somebody would be brought to justice, or at least there should be some court case about it. Now, Japanese officials claim the plant is now under control, but there have been reports that many Fukushima evacuees remain reluctant to return to their homes. Do you think those concerns are valid? I think that those people should not return to their homes. And I think that it's extremely unlikely that, the, uh, that these reactors are in what they call cold shutdown. I mean, I think this is discourse manipulation. The, 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 uh, very recently, xenon isotopes were being released from those, uh, those plants, and these xenon isotopes have sufficiently short half-lives for us to know that fissioning is still taking place in those reactors. All right, and briefly, what do you think should be done with the Japanese nuclear network now? Well, you know, the Japanese nuclear network was always dangerous. It was always built on the coast in areas where there were tsunamis. It was always built in areas where there were possibly going to be um, uh, earthquakes. And so really, if I were the Japanese people, I would demand that the government close down the entire nuclear operation in Japan and revert to some other form of generating energy. What would that be, do you think? Well, uh, there, uh, there have been studies made that show that, Japanese, Jap that, that Japan is very, very um, rich in, in wind power. And there are lots of ways in which uh, you can get uh, alternative generation of, ele of electricity. But the main problem, of course, is that there's too much electricity being used. We, we, are, we are burning up the planet in order to continue with a lifestyle which is really not sustainable. And I think that is the real answer to all of these questions about nuclear and fossil fuel and all the rest of it. We, we just, we're just burning too much fuel. All right, we have to leave it there. Professor Christopher Busby of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, thanks for your time.